Welcome to this free lesson from a larger course you can access on digitalcreatorschool.com. My name is Lucas Ridley, and I'm the instructor of this course. I hope you enjoy, and don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment if you enjoy this or want to see more like it. Thanks for watching. In this lesson, we're going to learn all about constraints. And if you've watched the rigging portion of this course, you'll have already gotten a pretty good understanding about constraints. But in, in this case, we're animating, we're not building a rig. So how do we use constraints in this instance where we have the robot and it goes down and the arm needs to uh, pinch down on it. So let's create that pinching effect. And then it needs to pick up the box. So we're gonna do that with constraints. So let's get this to pinch. It should close around frame here-ish. And we can make an antic here as well because we're not all the way to 10 yet. So we can have it open all the way and then slam shut. And we can make this linear so we keep the consistency of what we've established already for what the robot, how the robot moves with the claw. And let's just give ourselves even more time here, drag this thing out. So let's say we have it go down, it clamps, and then now, let's say, boom, maybe eight frames after it's clamped, Let's count out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or we can just do the math, uh, eight plus six. Let's have this robot go up and pick up the box. So let's have it go up. And I think it, it should go up slower because now it has a little weight. So we'll drag it up and let's compare the kind of Y translation motion. We can see it is slower, you know, this would be super slow, right? This slope is longer and not as steep. And uh, so we want it to just be slightly slower than it was before. And we could even, uh, because these are weighted tangents now, we could actually middle mouse drag this out so it has a really slow start, right? We could drag this super out like this. So now it'll have a, a, a pretty slow start. Yeah, I like that. So now the only problem is the fact that the box isn't going with it. So how do we animate that constraint that we're gonna make? Well, it's pretty easy. Now let's find the frame where we can kind of set this. You basically need to choose one frame and it needs to match you know, where the box is going to exist on the thing it's constrained to, right? We don't wanna constrain the box to this and it's not on it, right? It needs to be where it's gonna be when we constrain it. Um, so let's select this. If we click on the box, let's kind of see how that's set up in the outliner. We go to Windows, let's go to Outliner. So we can see there's a box geo group. And in general, whenever you're constraining things, if there's an opportunity to constrain it to something other than itself in a hierarchy, you always wanna go above it. So we have this empty group here and we can use this to constrain it because guess what? This controls the box too. So instead of using the box as a constraint, we're gonna use the group because if you remember from rigging, as soon as we make a constraint, it's gonna lock all of these channels. So if for some reason we wanted to animate, maybe the box slips a little bit when it is getting picked up, we wouldn't be able to do that if we had controls here, right? Um, so we wanna put this on whatever is above this in the hierarchy. And if this wasn't already there, we could make it. We could make another one. We could have two groups above this. We can just hit Command G. And now we have another group and we can call this number two. And now we have a group within a group. So we can make this hierarchy for ourselves uh, if we want to. This is what's important about having a little bit of a technical knowledge, even as an animator, because there might be instances where you need to create your own tiny little rigs, even if it's just like an empty group there above a piece of geometry, it's important to understand the concepts and how these things work together because it won't always be handed to you, right? Even if you work at a studio with some of the most talented people, even though they could do this for you, uh, like a rigger or something, they just might not have the time. So you need to have a little bit of understanding so that you can do this stuff for yourself. Even as an animator, if that's all you're interested in is animating, you still need to know this stuff. Okay, cool. So let's actually make the constraint now. Let's go to the, we can go to the rigging or the animation menu. Uh, they're both there. We could also hit spacebar in the middle of the viewport or not in the middle, really anywhere in the viewport. And uh, now we have the same menu here. We have constraint here. So 
I like to keep it in animation. That's what we're doing. So let's let's go to the animation. It's the same menu, and we can tear that off. And again, uh, you know, if you've followed rigging uh, in the earlier part of this course, then you are familiar with all these different types of constraints already. What we're interested in is the parent constraint. So let's open up the option box of that and close this little menu. I wanted to just quickly interrupt the video to remind you to subscribe to the channel. If you like videos like this, let me know. Also hit the bell notification icon so you get notified when new videos come out like this. And give a thumbs up and a comment if you want to see more like it or to suggest a video that you'd like to see. Thanks for watching. So we have only really one option we need to be concerned about, and that's maintain offset or not. And typically you want to maintain offset because like I said earlier, you'll have placed this thing where you want it to be. So when you want the constraint to turn on. So first we need to select the thing that's going to control it and then the child, right? But remember, we don't want to select the geometry. We want to select the group. So let's go up here to the outliner and hit command click. And now we have the group and we can hit apply with maintain offset, meaning there's an offset between these two pivot points. The pivot point for this control is up here. The pivot point for this box is over here. If we don't have maintain offset on, it's gonna snap the pivots to each other. And we don't want that. We want to maintain this offset between this pivot and that pivot, the distance between those. That's what the offset means, maintain offset, maintain that distance. So when we hit apply, it doesn't snap over there. It stays where it is. Except for the fact when the parent here gets moved uh, by its own parent, really, in the hierarchy, this is its parent. But when that moves in the animation we've already made, the box goes with it. The problem now is the fact that um, it's constrained, so it's always going to be following it. But we only want this to, you know, get picked up around here, let's say frame 115. So what we can go to is the actual constraint. And in this constraint, we have the pincher control over here. And this is why it's also important to name everything properly when you're rigging, because it's easier to identify when you do constraints like this. So what we can say is right click and go to key selected. So one means on, and if we go to the frame right before it, we can say zero, and because we have auto keyframe on over here, it's going to automatically set a key when we change that value. So I'm gonna close this, and when we scrub backward, now we can see it stays there until uh, this keyframe that we made for the constraint itself. Now, the most important thing to remember with constraints is when you're retiming things. It's really easy to forget that you have things constrained when let's say we wanted to move all of this animation over like 30 frames or something, right? If we moved all this stuff over, that didn't move the animation of the constraint. So the constraint is gonna get popped on before we want it. See right there, it's already started. And let me just exaggerate this even more so you can kind of see it more clearly. If we moved all this animation way over, as we scrub through and we get to that keyframe, I think it was 115, right? It'll pop up there. That is not what we want. You know, we wanted to retime everything. So the keyframes are gonna exist on this constraint node here that we made. So if we're gonna select everything, we need to remember to include this little group here, This or not the group, but this node is really what it's called, a node. So we would select all of the controls and accidentally selected the box, but there's no keyframes on it, so it won't really matter because there's no, you know, there's no keyframes on it, so there's nothing to select down here in the timeline for it. But if we command click this, we can see that we that little extra key popped up here. Let me command click that again. Look at frame 115, and boop, we can see now there's that frame, and we know it's selected. So if I click and retime this whole thing, I'm going to slide it over here. Again, we can see that when we scrub, it is actually still following along. Cool. So in this lesson, we've learned about constraints and how to have things you know, follow something else that we already have animated or animating to. So definitely, I would encourage you to have fun with this. If you're kind of bored with this example and you wanna make it more interesting, then I challenge you <laughs> to Make, to make it more interesting, you know, when you look at this animation and you're always kind of evaluating, okay, this looks boring and I don't really know why, start asking yourself questions. Well, what could I do, right? What could I do to make this more interesting? Well, I can, I can tell you for this example, you could, you know, the, the path of motion, 
which is another, it's not really a principle of animation, it's, it's more of a concept. Um, but there's this path of the motion. The path of motion we've created for this thing is very linear, meaning it's very straight, right? It's a straight line. And it goes from point A to point B. Well, what I think would be more interesting would be, you know, take advantage of the fact this is 3D. Always think, am I taking advantage of the fact that this is 3D? If you're not, then you might as well be drawing this with a pencil and paper, right? But for, our, for us, we could move this thing in three dimensions. It could be over here and the antic could be, you know, whatever it is. We could rotate this thing. The antic could ro be a rotation thing, right? You know, get creative with this. Make the antic be more interesting. Add rotation. You could have this have a more interesting path of motion. So maybe it travels down and it's rotated. The whole thing is rotated back. And then it goes up. Look at that. That's already more interesting. But again, we need to remember how we've set up all of these uh, animations. You can see down here, if we go to translate Y, this didn't really like that. We didn't have a keyframe over here. So let's hit S and we can bring this back up to the level that we need it to be at to, to uh, kind of have the tail to settle. But I mean, even in that one keyframe, that one little thing, it's to me, it's already more interesting. That kind of little duck, you know, it moves in another axis, right? Previously, it was moving in one axis, it was moving in the X axis, it was going from right to left, and that's it, in a straight line. But now, we made an in-between, right? In between two keyframes, we added a key, and, we, it, and it added some interest here, right? So I challenge you to use this exercise as a chance to experiment and play around with how do I make this more interesting? It's a pretty simple example, but you know, the, to me, the most fascinating thing about animation is when you can take a simple, a simple example and really make it interesting and that will get people's attention, right? Their expectations, you know, when they see something simple, uh, like a, a little robot like this, it might be not very high, but if you, if you do something pretty interesting with it, um, that's what grabs people's attentions, right? So even something, you know, we took two seconds here and added, you know, one or two little keyframes and it already looks more interesting. And what I would do is, you know, of course, add an overshoot to this. You know, it hits this wall here, it goes bop, and it just pops right there. So now that we added this up and down motion, we should probably add an overshoot vertically here. So let's bring this up and over a little bit. And then I'm just gonna middle mouse drag this key over here and set a key. So I basically copy and paste it with that. So oh, that looks super wonky. I think the, the Y translates messed up. Yeah, let's just bring that back. So we have a little bit of a uh, settle there. But anyway, you get the idea. Use these principles and these concepts make this your own okay and in the next lesson we'll continue learning animation and some more advanced concepts and practices and exercises all right thanks for watching bye thanks for watching this free lesson if you want to see the entire course you can become a member at digitalcreatorschool.com to get the course in its entirety as well as all the courses available on the website in addition to all future courses that will be published as a monthly or annual member, you can cancel any time. I will see you there. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the bell notification icons, as well as leave me a comment if you wanna see more videos like this, or if you have a suggestion for a video you'd like to see in the future. Thanks for watching.